very, very good. It's okay. So now I think it's time to start. So it's a great pleasure to announce Professor Tua Wen from Penn State University. He's going to talk about Landau damping in the weekly collisional regime. So please, Professor. Okay, thanks. Um, thanks a lot for the uh, introductions and thanks for the invitations uh, to, uh, to speak here. And it's a great pleasure to, uh, to talk in this conference. <clears throat> um, all right, so uh, I should start. Right? <clears throat> so uh, the, the topic uh, that I'm going to talk uh, today <clears throat> is um, on uh, Landau damping in, uh, in plasma physics. Um, but of course, uh, it has a lot of similarities in, in fluids, right? So uh, I thought it would be interesting to people in the audience. <clears throat> so this is the, uh, the joint work with, um, at least I focus on the joint work with uh, Sanjit Chaturvedi and Jonathan Luke, uh, both at Stanford. All right. And uh, I should also uh, acknowledge uh, the funding from NSF. AMS and Simon Foundations that's supporting me, me uh, this work. All right, <clears throat> so the equations um, I'm going to talk today is, uh, is a very fundamental model in plasma physics. It's, uh, it's called plasma Poisson Landau. So uh, this is the model that uh, describes the dynamics of electrons, where F uh, it's a function, it's a density distribution function. Um, it's a function of T, X, and V, right? And T, X, and V, uh, X and V live on the phase space. So, so it's a function on the phase space when X is on the torus and V is on the whole space. And the equation for F is um, the flux of equations. So on the left, it's called flux of equations, right? And on the right, so we were supposed to solve a, a Louis V equations. And on the right, uh, it's uh, taking into account of uh, collisions, All right? Collisions. And um, <clears throat> for the velocity of equations, you see that and there's only one nonlinear term. So the, the, the F is, um, is, uh, is uh, moving around like a tra transport equation with a force field, uh, which is a self consistent uh, electric field. And uh, this field is. Um, is um, obtained, um, I mean, it's planned through the mean few uh, uh, long interactions, right? So uh, you can write it explicitly in BDs as uh, Boisson equations. Um, it's it's, uh, it's uh, generated by uh, uh, the charge densities, okay? Rho, rho minus one, where rho is the integral of F, okay? Where one, where one you think of one as uh, uh, as the, the background entities for ions, okay? So the situations you could have in mind is that uh, ions is very heavy and, and slow, and, and, and I'm interested in the dynamics of electrons, which is uh, very fast and moving around, all right? Some, histor some historical remarks. So, uh, of course, uh, Maxwell was uh, the one that gave birth to uh, what we now call kinetic theory, all right? It's a theory that uh, for a function that depends on X and V, all right? So, on a phase space, as opposed to uh, equation in fluid that we see is only dependent on the positions where velocity is the, the average quantity. And Boltzmann's, uh, write out the Boltzmann collisions operator, right? But Boltzmann wrote it down for uh, the operators that uh, that supposed to describing gas, right? Rarefied gas, okay? And Landau later corrected that uh, for plasma, because for plasma, um, electrons are interacting through uh, Coulomb tensor, the one over X. And with that Coulomb tensor, the Boltzmann uh, collision kernel is uh, divergent, or it, it doesn't make any sense. So Landau uh, replacing that with the Landau collisions operator. And Vlasov, uh, two years after, argue that uh, for plasma, uh, mean field is more important, right? Mean field is, is stronger, right? Mean field interaction is stronger than collisions. <clears throat> Okay, and that leads me to what I'm going to talk now, which is the weekly, which is these equations in a weekly collisional regime, okay? Which is a regime where new 
is a, a physical constant is very very small right and it's about to correct the last time uh, it's about to be the last time correction so i mean few. and the collision operator is looking like this <clears throat> okay so you uh so instead of uh, boseman you have a gain and a loss term now you replace that with um dv right so in the equations you have uh, f star dv of f and f dv of f star and there's a dv in front so this is um landau collision operator and this is what i'm going to use for uh this work okay and this is the <clears throat> all right you could think of that uh, in fact is is uh, you could write this collision operator in a non-conservative form which is uh <clears throat> which is in the form of uh, laplace of f right so you think of collisions adding collisions like a laplace of f all right on the right hand side laplace of f however it's non-linear you have uh, you have some uh, coefficients in front that depend on f okay and there's plus f square also um in plasma physics uh, or, or, or or at least uh, <clears throat> sometimes it's easier to use uh, instead of landau collision operator you're using what we call focke planck operator right it's just laplace of v of f right so you get um transport equations equal diffusions in v all right so that's the equations and adding adding collisions uh it doesn't it doesn't change uh, to the total mass momentum and energy they will conserve and there's a famous uh, boseman s theorems also holds for uh, landau equations for landau collision operator uh, it means that if you add collisions then you have entropy dissipations and explicitly you can calculate uh, the validity of integral of uh, f log f is uh, decreasing right and it's equal to zero if and only if f is maxwellians um and uh, on the torus you can normalize the maxwellians to be just exponential minus v square all right and so uh, and so in terms of uh, last time corrections to the mean field uh, this essentially means that um the long time dynamics for uh for equation with collisions should be very simple right Everything should converge into uh, Maxwellians, all right. So at least these are the last time corrections. However, there's something to say. The first thing is that the Cauchy problem for Landau is is uh, is open. You don't know whether the existence of global classical solutions or finite time blow up that's not known. Even in the case when you have x independent, it's still not known. And so these equations you could think of like uh, I mean the the situations like what you have in Navier-Stokes in fact. You have weak solutions, but there's no uh, no uniqueness. You have partial regularity with a with a house of dimensions of singularities uh, less than one half. It's like uh, everything just like in uh, in Navier stocks and last time dynamics supposed to be simple. However, uh, there's no global solutions uh, for that. And so <clears throat> my talk is also uh, focus on um, say the similar questions is uh, the question of asymptotic, asymptotic stability, meaning that you, you wanted to construct a, a, a last time solutions or global solutions in time, uh, smooth and classical uh, as uh, in the perturbative regime, right? In the regime that um, everything is near a Maxwellians, near mu, <coughs> very similar mu. And this uh, program, um, in fact, was initiated and developed by Yang Go around 2000 for Collisional models, and he applied that for uh, Boltzmann's uh, loss of Maxwell, Boltzmann, loss of Poisson, Boltzmann, Landau, uh, and loss of Poisson, Landau, and all of that. Okay, <clears throat> so this is uh, this is what I'm going to uh, uh, to talk now. Just follow loss of Poisson, Landau, right? All right. What is the perturbative regime? <clears throat> So I look at in the regime as a perturbation of, of Maxwellians in this form. So mu is always now with Maxwellians. It's a perturbative regime. The first thing to do is to write out the linearized equation or to, to, to write out the perturbative, to write out the equation for perturbations, F. F now is very small. So you have uh, you have a linear Landau and you have a linear mean field. So this one in mean field, you all remember that only only one nonlinear term, which is EDV of F. And 
everything's uh, essentially most of things in uh, most of difficulties are, are from that uh, because of that. Okay, and it's some nonlinear. So what is L? All right, nonlinear uh, Landau operator is like uh, Laplace of V with some coefficients. Linearized operator, no surprising, is similar. You have uh, like Laplace of V with some coefficients. Uh, this operator is positive. It has some non-trivial kernel, but this kernel you could uh, modulate, uh, not so difficult, uh, using the conservation laws. <clears throat> However, there's no spectral gap, right? Because the coefficients, uh, sigma ij. So sigma ij is, remember, is the, the convolutions of uh, phi with f, right? Now f is Maxwellian. So you can you can compute it out uh, explicitly. Uh, is uh, is degenerate at for last v, so it's like v minus three, v minus one here. So all right, there's no spectral gap, so it's not uh, straightforward to get uh, decay, let's say. However, uh, a goal uh, introducing a weighted energy method to treat exactly this problem, and here's the formula for uh, here's the the energy inequality that he derives. Okay. Where E and D, of course, the, the energy and displacement norm, I did not uh, say uh, details, but it's very uh, delicate to set it up, in fact. Um, in my last slides, I will uh, write it down for you. But right now, let's say you have the energy inequality like this, and you see immediately two things. The first thing is that diffusions enter at a time t of order one over nu, right? It's just like a heat equation, right? Laplace so. Diffusion enter at time of order one over nu, that's clear. The mean field, mean field meaning EDV of, of F, is there's no new in front, so it's propagates only up to time of order one over epsilon, where epsilon is the sign of initial datum, right? So if, suppose that uh, initial datum is epsilon, you hope that E remains of order epsilon, then you can propagate unto times of order one over epsilon. All right, there's no mysterious about that. Then you see there are some complex structure of mean few may develop before diffusion kicks in, right? Provided that um, if nu is smaller than epsilon zero, right? So epsilon zero is initial datum, nu is the collisional parameters. If nu is small or too small, then something may happen because diffusion, at least for now, you see only enter at the time t of order one of a new, right? So you have to wait much longer to see diffusions. And that the results of uh, Jan Goh confirm that if epsilon zero initial datum is really small as compared to new, then diffusions kick in almost immediately, right? There's no crazy structure of mean few uh, developed yet. So this is the result confirmed by uh, Jan, Jan Goh in this paper. And, and he's saying that, yeah, if uh, initial datum of order new, then uh, these perturbations and these ansatz uh, um, propagate and he will be also able to uh, obtain some uh, stress exponential decay right, of this form, even without a spectral gap, right? This is, this is a very deep result. <clears throat> the program, <clears throat> the program with uh, my collaborators is to trying to find the optimal uh, beta, so that uh, if the same initial datum is smaller than new to beta, you still have asymptotic stability. So uh, in another words, can you extend the basin of attractions, right? Or can you enlarge the basin of attractions? Or what is the optimal basin of attractions right? of Maxwellians? Of course, the result by goal is beta equal one, and you want it to reduce beta. So Perossians, <clears throat> So before this, there the are other results also, but for, for linear, say for uh, the result by Isabel Pistani, uh, for linear Vlasov focal plan. But Berossians was the first to be able to prove, to consider the, the, the system Vlasov focal plan, meaning the collision operator is just uh, Laplace of B. Um, and he be able to reach for the nonlinear problem, reads beta equal one third okay, for soap lab data. And a similar results uh, uh, is obtained recently by Masmudi and Zhao. 
uh, for Navy stocks in the Kuwait. All right. Their previous results, like Masmuri, Birosians, and Vico, they obtained it for beta equal one half. In fact. Yeah. So one third, it seemed to be the threshold, although uh, there's nothing confirming that. My results uh, is to obtain the same results for Vlasa Bosong Landau. Right? So the, the results with uh, uh, Chatuvari and Luke are confirming this result with the same beta equal one third for Vlasa Bosong Landau. Let me explain one third first. So one third appearing in fact, because uh, of the transfer diffusion structure in the equations. So uh, this operator, we sometimes call a uh, Komogorov operator uh, or focke planck operator. And it's the same for Navistok's Nekuet, studied by uh, Masmuri and Yao. So the operator is a dt plus vdx minus nu dv square of f, right? So this is very simple operator. It turned out that you see the transport, all right, the transport, the transport will move all the frequencies. So let's just assume that the frequency in X is non-zero. So the frequency in V, they all located along the line eta equal KT, all right? So the transport will make things move to the high frequencies very fast of order KT, all right? Now, the classical diffusions is decaying like exponential minus new t to eta square. But since the transport moves things to high frequency very fast, and so you, you plug that ansatz in with new kt, you see new, you see that diffusions now, in fact, enter at a much, much earlier time than the classical diffusions. Okay, so enter at the time t of order new one third instead of time t of order one over new, like classical diffusion from heat equation that we see. So in the literature, this is what we call in hand dissipations yeah? because of the transport structure in hand dissipations. You could also see that by at least doing this scaling invariance, let's say you have, you look at the problem with viscosity new, but now you, uh, um, you, uh, you, change your, um, you change the variable like this, you scale in time, so you expect time t of order new one minus one third. You change v of new uh, one third, then the viscosity is one. And this scaling is in fact is good for us to later design the norm, right? So you see that dx is remain of order one. However, dv is of order new minus one third, and the time t of order new minus one third. All right. Now with the viscosity of order one, then you know that with the transport and diffusion in v is enough to control um or uh, derivative right so this is uh, what uh, known as hypo electricities by home right as long as the commutator and all the operator uh, are independent then it spans the whole uh, tangent space okay so <clears throat> this idea um make it um make it precise for uh, uh, in the in the um, in the memoir by villani and what he he called the name uh, hypercoercivities, okay? And you could make that exp uh, um, explicitly for these equations, right? You do the energy estimate, the usual energy estimate in L2 for F and dx of F, and you do the, the usual energy estimate for dv, right? With the right scaling that I mentioned. Now, if you add the cross term in the energy, it's turned out that with, with this cross term, you control the whole diffusions. You control dx, dv, the whole diffusions, despite the fact that in the equations, there's a lack of diffusions in X, right? So this is what I call hypercoercivities norm, and this is what I'm going to use. So the program is clear. You have everything, combine them, and do it for Vlasov, Boston, Landau. All right, with the same new one third, like Berossians and Masmuri and Zhao. There are several fundamental issues. <clears throat> it's not just technical. That lambda operator is, com is complicated, um, but there are fundamental issues. And the issues is clear. First issue is clear. You see that if you combine high bulk activities, you have the norm, you learn the norm. You have goal weighted energy method. You combine them. You look just one term, which is mean field. 
we see that the norm is dv is of order new one third. So dv is of order new one third of e. And it's lost because you really need integral in time of this. You need integral in time of this to be finite in order to propagate, right? But integral of this is only of order one. It's not finite because initial term is of new one third. You don't gain extra uh, smallness, right? And so what you need here is really you need to propagate Landau damping, meaning that the damping of electric field independent of new. Okay. And these issues, of course, is not present in the previous result by Go, for instance, because by Go, E and F, they all decay, but decay with new dependence, right? So you, so you don't see that. You don't have this issue. All right. So let's do Landau damping. <clears throat> so the usual way, at least the way to do Landau damping is, is, is that is that for f there's no decay or anything you wanted to integrate of f and expect some decay and so let me do that here you have uh, diffusions on the left integrate along the characteristics you see immediately that diffusions is like dv square and so dv square eats new two third so you have only new one third left integral in time is of only of order one you lose i mean you lost you you wanted to propagate not only new one third all the way up to diffusion time, but also decay. So this is lost, no useful. And then you, and so you cannot treat diffusions as a motivations, number one. Number two, unlike Fokker-Planck or Kuwait or Navistock's near Kuwait, you can do that in Fourier. Here, Fourier in V is uh, useless, right? You cannot do because diffusions de uh, dependent on V. And it's a mess. Okay, it's de degenerate uh, diffusions. So a framework follows. <clears throat> in order to tell you the framework in this uh, in this uh, program, let me first recall you the phase mixing. So phase mixing is uh, is a uh, let's just look at the phase mixing for the free transport. So there's no mean field, no collisions. So <clears throat> If you have, if you would value of F, let's say one, two, and three, let's say, right. So <clears throat> let's say the value on, on, on the blue is, is one. So for, for so the phase missing is when a T increase, the solution of free transport is explicit, right? Is F equal initial data term of X minus VT or X plus VT, V, okay? And so everything is just transported. So the higher, higher V is faster as move. So it's move like that. When T equal one, they all move to X plus VT or X plus V. When T is large, all mixed like that. Okay. So when T is infinite, you expect that the average in V, you see no dependence in X. Okay. So of course, phase mixing, there's no decay for F, but it's a decay for the average, right? Because average, you see no dependence in X. So it, it's converging to the average in X. Okay. In fact, you can do that explicitly, right? Explicitly in Fourier. So K is, is, is uh, IDX in Fourier. So this is the exact solution for free transport integral in V. So this one is exactly Fourier transform in X and V evaluate at K and KT, okay? And so if the initial data term is overlap, meaning, meaning that the function F0 is decaying polynomial in V, then you get this decay, right? If the initial datum is analytic, then it decay exponentially. All right. So that's why uh, the higher regularity, the faster decay you get. Okay. So that's explicit. We have to do Landau. So Landau, it just means that you add mean few term, you have EDV mu in there. And, and it's natural to look at uh, the resolvent. Okay. The resolvent. And the resolvent is explicitly the resolvent for densities explicitly one over D times uh, rho K. And rho K is the densities of free transport, which I just computed in the previous page. So the density of loss of song is equal one over D density of uh, free transport. What is D? D is what we call the electric kernel. It's nothing but, it's nothing but one minus 
the ratio between electric field and free transport. Okay, so this is the ratio between electric field and, and free transport. And you wanted to look at the ratio between electric field and free transport comparing to with one, comparing with one. There are three regimes, very clear. When K is large, the electric field is very small as comparing to free transport. When K in between, the electric field and free transport may, uh, I mean, they have to compete. And so plasma may or may not be stable. Bandrol regimes is the regime where plasma is stable, meaning that th this ratio is always different from one. Okay, so this is the regime that apply to all monotone equilibria, equilibria, okay? And this is what I call, what we call um, Bandrol's stable regime. It's the regime where this D never vanishes. Okay. And it's applied for Gaussians, monotone equilibrium. The contributions of Bandrol is in fact allow uh, one big bump with a small bump in tail, right? This is the contribution, great contributions of Bandrol's. If you have plasma with two bumps, it's unstable. In the stable regime, in the stable regime, meaning that D is non-zero, then there's a famous result by Muhobilani, and later extended by Birossians, Masmuri, and Muho. Um, <clears throat> so first, the linear result is to say the densities row of Lassabosong is bounded by densities row of the free transport, All right? And this is immediate because for D is about it away from zero, right? Right, and 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 D is the symbol in uh, space and time. All right, and uh, so the nonlinear result they be able to do nonlinear results. So Muhovilani do nonlinear result for analytic datum, and Berossians must put in more extended for algebraic datum. Recently, we re revisit uh, this problem and expanding the resolvents uh, one over D by one plus one minus D over D. And you see that we able to expand, uh, obtain the representations point-wise, right? Point-wise. And of course, uh, when you do uh, nonlinear with point-wise in T, uh, everything is uh, much, much uh, easier. And it's saying here that precisely the density of loss of Boston is approximately the density of free transport. And density of free transport is the picture that I shown you, right? Is everything is decaying exponentially for uh, for high reality for analytic uh, data and polynomial for sub left. In fact, we using that uh, these uh, representations, we are uh, able to give uh, together with uh, Emmanuel Grenier and Igor Roninsky, we gave uh, a very simple proof of uh, nonlinear dam non damping results uh, obtained earlier by Masmo, uh, by Moore Villani and Perosians Masmuri and more. All right, so nonlinear is I added here. <clears throat> in fact, there are more. We'll be able to construct echoes, uh, plasma echoes, and construct solutions that are large in sub left, but you still have uh, damping. But that's not uh, the topic of today. The topic today is, uh, <clears throat> is um, you know, is a lana damping in the collisional regime. <clears throat> so let's, let's go on. All right, so we learned that diffusions may take. Uh, diffusions may enter at new minus one third. We have to make sure that we have to propagate Landau dumping up to that time. Okay, so let's see, <clears throat> and and we do it for Sobel F. Right, so let's see. So the first thing is that all right. The first thing is the first thing for the representation that I wrote is that look at the equations, nonlinear equation, plus of Poisson. These terms you can ignore. Right, this is the the whole point. Right, this is the whole point. So the problem reduced to the problem near vacuum. And near vacuums is explicit. You have uh, electric field is electric field of the free transport plus the nonlinear term. So everything is uh, is um, is follow the free transport, right? You move to uh, you move to the KT and you come back to minus LS. And so <clears throat> suppose that everything is uh, in sober left, meaning that everything is decay. Um, everything is decay um, uh, polynomially, right? Polynomially. So, uh, so the electric field is decay polynomially, like Ls to the minus sigma. 
um, F is also decay polynomially, okay, T minus LS, so everything is overlap. By using uh, the triangle inequalities, uh, these two terms, you bought it by this, all right? So this is what, this is what you want to get, right? You want to get uh, the boot trap, right? You want to boot in the electric field decay that much, F decay that much, and you get back the same decay for electric field. Of course, this calculations is only true if I can beat the green point, right? I can beat integral of zero t, t minus s, okay? If I can beat that, all right? Um, of course, let's say if I'm not careful, integral of t and t minus s uh, is of order t square. So I can only do that up to the time t of order epsilon to minus one half, right? But I realized that the only problems is when kt minus ls is small. And when kt minus ls is small, t minus s is really of order t. In fact, really of order t. And so integral of, and kt minus ls is still integrable. And so you only have this, of you lose only one t. You lose only one factor of t. And so you move it out, you have epsilon t. So effectively, what it means is that for Sobel F, you can go, you can propagate Landau damping up to the time t of other epsilons, one of epsilon zero, okay? Because as long as epsilon zero t is small, you can you can bootstrap, you can um, you can close the nonlinear, right? So that's for Sobel F. And of course for Gervais, this is uh, Muho Bilani and and Birosians uh, Masmuri and Muho. And and again, I already mentioned that uh, we have a very similar proof of that. All right, so now I wanted to, so now we understand that, all right, up to the time t of order one of epsilon zero, and epsilon zero will be new, new one third. So at least up to that time, we have, we still have Landau damping, but without collisions, right? Now you add collisions. And remember collisions, you cannot treat as about the So you really have to do Landau damping with collisions, all right? Landau damping with collisions. Collisions. <clears throat> so you really have to do this whole equations with the uh, with the collisions. You cannot treat as perturbations. All right, we do the same. I say <clears throat> we do the same. We um, we look at the resolvance uh, kernel, which is one over d, and again we trying to expand uh, the resolvance kernel as one plus one minus d over d, where d is now dependent on new. Right, what is D is the ratio between electric field and the transport, All right? But now the transport has a uh, new L and remember L is like Laplacians. L is a linearized Landau operator, okay? Not to confuse with Landau dumping. <clears throat> All right, so you have uh, Laplacians here, but then, I mean, that means that this doesn't make any sense, of course. <clears throat> but then we remember that one of, a, one of a lambda is nothing but um, Laplace transform of one, right? Laplace transform of one, okay? So this line doesn't make any sense, but next lines make perfect sense, right? <clears throat> next line make perfect sense, which is what we use. So <clears throat> one over L, we write it that Laplace transform of one, right? So you have this exponential here, but this exponential make perfect sense because this exponential is nothing but the semi-group of the linear problem, right? Without E, right? Remember that I'm trying to treat the electric field, right? So I'm comparing the electric field and the transport, right? And in this case, for Maxwellians, the electric field remains uh, perturbations of the transport. So this is exactly the case here. And with that, we have a similar density representations. You have the densities of velocity of song Landau is equal the densities of Velocity of, uh, of Landau, okay? of Landau. So this is like a free transport, but with a Landau, okay? This is a free transport with Landau, plus a small perturbation. And the perturbation is, uh, is decaying very fast in T and even depend on new, uh, even independent of new, sorry. Okay? So for this, for what I wrote here, the only thing is to look at is to understand the decay from the semi-group, right? At least for now, okay? And to get the, that decay, to get that decay, 
we're going to use um, the classical uh, Kleinemann vector field method. Okay. This method was introduced um, in around uh, 1982 uh, to treat um, the quasi-linear uh, quasi wave equations. All right. So the idea is that you have the equations and you look for symmetries in the equations and you trying to commute uh, the equation with some vector field. And with that, that vector field is respecting the symmetries. So you can still do the energy estimate on that, uh, that, um, that uh, new equations, the equation for uh, commuting vector field, all right? So for instance, this, uh, this uh, test mode equations, you can very easily do uh, L2 estimates. Okay, you do the L2, you multiply by F, integrate, and you get L2, all right? So you find the vector field to commute with that and do the same energy estimate. And it's turned out uh, the vector field for the free test part is nothing but dV plus TDX. So this is the vector field that we're going to use, all right? <clears throat> And this vector field is commute with the transport is uh, almost commute with the diffusions. The point is that when, because the diffusion doesn't depend on X. And so when you do that, you have only V and this has become a lower order, right? Remember that diffusion have a new, okay? And also, uh, and so, on, and now we're going to just do energy estimate on for F, for uh, F and then Y of F and Y square of F and Y to the N of F. And this is how you get, this is how we get the face missing, okay? And it's uniform in new. Let me do one. So the face missing is, uh, is like in Fourier, you, uh, you, you have the K in KT, but now in physical space, you can do it explicitly like this. You have, uh, you have TDX, TDX hit F, right? The K for, for raw. TDX hit F or TDX, you can try it as Y and DV, okay? You already have energy estimate for y and dv you integration by part all right so you see that energy estimate in f and yf give you decay in row and you can do that uh, for any other t this idea of using the uh, commuting vector field for kinetic equations was uh, was uh, i think uh, jack uh, smulevici was the first to uh, use it for velocity poisson he was the first to use velocity poisson is uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the transport plus the mean field. And uh, Leo uh, Bigoni used that for plus of Maxwell. Martin Tyler and also uh, Lindblad and Tyler used that for plus of uh, Einstein's. And look, and Chatuvari, Chatuvari, uh, my collaborators in this program, uh, was the first to use that for Bosman and Landau. All right, so look using that for Landau near vacuum and Chaturvati using that for Landau near vacuum in some regime and for Boltzmann. Reboot for the Foon plus of Boltzmann Landau. Here, so here's the Foon equations. You get linear, you get the, this mean field term, but now remember that because of Landau dumping or because of the resolvents, you don't care about this anymore. This one no longer an issue because E now decaying very fast and E of order new one third. So it's integral in time. This one gives you a bit of trouble. You go introducing some weighted norm to really completely get the rate of that. This is the nonlinear from Landau operator, which is also already treated by Go. So the, the results or the program, <coughs> the framework that we introduce in this work is the energy method for, for F but for derivative of f, right? For derivative in x, derivative in v, and derivative with the vector few, um, with the mean few, uh, with the, with the um, commuting vector few, y, all right? And remember, I mean, maybe it's a remark that this vector few is, is uh, turned out to be uh, very simple and it works for the nonlinear equations as well, precisely because of Landau dumping, precisely because E decay very fast. So because of Landau dumping, the transport is really the free transport, yeah? And then we do the uniform resolvance uh, in new for Landau dumping, all right? And so here's the norm, here's the norm that we use. <clears throat> here's the exact norm that we use, the exact norm that we use. So we, we're going to do energy estimate for H with this norm, all right? 
and decay for densities using a resolvent. So here's the norm. So remember the the uh, the high ball coercitivities norm that um, I wrote down for the for the simple equations. You have the L two norm for H and the X of H. The L two norm for dV and the cross term. And then you have the diffusion norm, right? And with the weight, the weight is in fact very delicate, <clears throat> but it's exactly the weight that was introduced by Gold in his work. And effectively he's saying that if, uh, if you take dV, you lose, uh, you lose uh, v, v square, right? You take dV, you have a weight, a weight V square. And, uh, and this is the energy estimate. This is the norm that we use for the systems, for the equations. And of course, uh, we have to pray that everything uh, work out well, uh, right? And uh, of course we did. In fact, a few more norms, uh, a few more terms, but that's okay. Uh, so here's the results. <clears throat> here's the precise results uh, that we posted on archive uh, recently. And the results is that uh, the max valence is uh, stable uh, with a further, uh, further nonlinear perturbations of a uh, datum of the sign new one third, exactly the same sign as uh, Berossian for Fokker Planck and Masmuri and Zhao for Navistocks near Kuwait. Okay. And we need um, 11 derivative. Um, that's okay. <clears throat> and then you had um, in hand dissipations, which is precisely uh, what I mean by uh, uh, diffusions enter at uh, the time new one third. And we also have uh, we also have the uniform uh, Landau dumping. Okay, and that uh, concludes my talk uh, today. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm done my talk. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Are there any questions, comments? On the different screen. No, sorry. So, um... Can I, uh, first of all, uh, congratulate you. This is a wonderful result. So uh, uh, my question to you, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you, yeah. yeah I, I just wanted to look uh, who, who's, who's uh, here. Uh, this is Peter. Uh, okay, yes, okay. Right, yeah. Well, yeah, I can hear you, I can hear you okay, yeah. yeah I, okay. I, I look this way, but I can hear you. All right. So uh, the question, of course, this is uh, uh, yes, for yes, sorry. Yeah. Peter. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's a quite complicated uh, program and uh, situation, but uh, for plasma, there there are other effects that are important, in particular magnetic effects. So if you have the magnetic even. Uh, the non-relativistic, but still the magnetic effects. What can one say? Absolutely, absolutely. This is, uh, of course, this is really, uh, really the um, uh, essentially the the, uh, the seamless model, uh, right. meaning that you uh, you uh, you uh, you pretending that the uh, the speed of light is already infinite, right? right. But uh, when you have the magnetic field, uh, there's an interesting uh, linear result by the uh, Russians. So he 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 add um, I mean all right first of all you, if you add magnetic field everything is open all right even even linear land damping is open first okay. of all everything is open okay everything is open Lin even linear all right in the, on the torus the issue is that on the torus uh, on the torus uh, Maxwell is a wave equations so all right you may not uh, expect um, uh, damping from the wave. On the whole space, this is very interesting, uh, Peter. On the whole space, um, I mean, you, then you you uh, you uh, you say that all right. I mean, look at the problem on the whole space. On the whole space, the issue is, in fact, plus of Poisson on the whole space somehow include, sorry, plus of Maxwell in the whole space somehow include plus of Poisson. All right, I mean, you, you 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 see plus of Poisson, but then for plus of Poisson in the whole space, the same problem. Nonlinear, completely open. Linear results. This is what we did uh, recently with uh, Daniel Han Kwan and Ferrer Crusé. And at the same time, by um, Berossians, Masmuri, and Muho, 
we also must really move on, do it for um, for the Gaussians uh, with Han Quan and Frederick Rousset. We do it for general um, equilibrium, and we be able to obtain dispersive uh, decay for linear plus a Poisson on a whole space. And then together with uh, with uh, Emmanuel Grenier from Ernest Lyon and Igor Runiansky at, uh, at Princeton, we be able to identify precisely uh, the Landau dumping uh, in the whole space. Yeah, in the whole space with, with Poisson. Poisson. <clears throat> right. yeah. because, because if you look at uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the quantity that I wrote uh, at one point, right? There are three regime, three regime, large K, K in between, so large K is, is, uh, is trivial, K in between is, uh, is uh, Muho Villani on the torus, but in the whole space, you have K small. K zero, right, right. Right, and K small, everything is driven by electric field. Right, I know, but suppose I give you, suppose I give you like in, uh, I, I don't know, like uh, in Klein Gordon or something, I give you damping. I give you damping, constant damping in the space uh, just uh, to help you out, but I want magnetic field. Yeah, but uh, with magnetic view. Uh, but, uh, but so you this, suppose this is great, this is great question. Question. magnetic view with great questions is uh, is open. Yeah, right. everything is open. Yeah, all right. Open. So I mean, in, 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 in the whole space, in the whole space, uh, uh, of Poisson, uh, but with damping, let's say we call it Hartmann or something like that. We add constant damping. Then, but, uh, then you, uh, you how do you add, uh, how do you add damping? You add just, uh, just by hand. Just by okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, in the in the uh, the perturbation equation. So in other words, Ma Maxwellian uh, perturbation for Maxwellian is damped uh, artificially. So you put ah, wait, no, no. You, you mean you mean uh, you write down uh, you write down the linear the... equation for the linear equation. We add right. by hand then. Right. Then, then everything should be okay, right? In the whole space. In other words, you take care of k equals zero. Ah, yes, yeah, okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Maybe I, maybe I should mention, uh, my, I should mention uh, one of uh, my earlier results uh, that actually um, just um, published on uh, your journal, um, Nanos BDEs, is that we look at the case um, for the screen plus a Poisson. For the screen plus a Poisson, it means that the potential is Coulomb, uh, but then you screen out the, 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 the last X, right? So right. meaning that the potential is one of x exponential of minus x, I say. Yeah. Then with that case, the the uh, the uh, the function d here is one over one plus k square. Right. So you don't have issue of small frequencies, and with that we prove. Um, Landau damping. Landau damping, uh, with the with the methods that really similar to uh, the method uh, near vacuum by Bados de Gong in eighty six. In fact. After we uh, after we able to 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 understand well the uh, resolvent right of course after we do the the the, the resolvent then the nonlinear is exactly like uh, in vacuum so uh, so 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 the answer is yes if you uh, somehow can remove um, somehow can remove the zero frequencies then you can do uh, Landau dumping and and that's then one example yeah. but for your model. Uh, uh, yes, I have to look at uh, in a bit more details. How do you add uh, damping for the Maxwell? Um, but as long as you remove uh, the zero frequency, is I, I think it should be okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any other question? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I have the lunch break. And then we come back in one hour for the talk of Professor Gabriela Planas. Okay, see you in one hour. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gwen. <laughs>